Hi, this is David Hine, Aspect Art. We're at the Van Hulk today for the big summer show of Signac. Signac is best known for the little dots of color that make up the shapes, called puntillism. He and Sere formed this neo-impressionist group, and it went on for quite a while. He lived quite a while, actually, into the 20th century, I think 1930. The curator of this show is John Layton, who is the director of the Van Hoek Museum. So join us now for Signac with John Layden. Thank you. You've got a new big summer exhibition on a uh, French neo-impressionist. Could you tell us a little about Signac? Sure. Um, Signac isn't one of the great familiar names of uh, the 19th century. People will have heard of Monet or Manet. Uh, and Signac, in a way, uh, has been overshadowed by more famous contemporaries like uh, Van Gogh or even Georges Seurat. Um, this is the first uh, exhibition to be devoted to Signac, major exhibition, in almost 40 years. And what we want to do is we want to bring Signac out of the shadow of uh, the greater names like Sura and show his own work in his own right, l light. And uh, I think people will be surprised and fascinated. There's a lot to see here. Now, he was not... Well, as my understanding and looking at the exhibition, he was more or less an Impressionist painter in the beginning. How did his style evolve and who influenced who and how did that work? Well, Signac came to painting almost by accident. Uh, he might have become a writer or, uh, or even a poet. He, when he was a young man, he was um, drawn into the, the heavy, heady avant-garde circles of artistic life in Montmartre, where, where he lived. And uh, even at the age of 18, he published some pastiches of Emile Zola. And he came to painting, uh, as I said, by, by, by accident, working out his own version of Impressionism. He saw Impressionist pictures in the windows of shops in uh, Montmartre, had a go himself. And uh, there's a wonderful spontaneity and uh, almost a rebellious quality to uh, his, his first works, which are paintings of his studio, paintings of his mistress, paintings of his, of his friends, a number of which are, are in the exhibition. So yes, you're right, he started uh, very much in an Impressionist vein. And as his style developed, what changed him into someone that painted with little dots? Mm -hmm. Well, the, perhaps the, the, the key moment is uh, his meeting with uh, Georges Seurat, and uh, that happened in uh, 1884. And Seurat was at that moment uh, an, a, quite an accomplished artist. He'd just shown his first uh, major art. Seurat had, a, had a, an academic training behind him. And although it's, it's a very unlikely combination, because Signac was an, an amazingly flamboyant and outgoing extrovert uh, character who loved sport, he loved sailing. Uh, Sura was uh, the complete opposite. He was terse, aloof, very introverted man. But somehow they, they, they took to another, you know, opposites uh, attract. And this artistic partnership uh, developed. And it was Sura who first developed this uh, idea of painting, not in the wild dashes and uh, painterly way of uh, Impressionism, but a much more disciplined style using small dots of colour. When Signac first saw it in uh, works like this in Surah's studio in 1885, he too began to uh, work in this style. So uh, you find uh, the Impressionism, that spontaneity, that exuberance, gradually being uh, boxed in, if you like, by this more disciplined and rigorous uh, approach. Till uh, in a relatively short time, 
he evolves a style which in some ways is the antithesis of uh, Impressionism. Now, speaking of the antithesis, the Impressionist had an idea about capturing a moment, catching a fleeting glimpse of light in, a, in the plain air. Were there theories associated with, I'm assuming that the style we're talking about is puntillism. Or, yes. Were there various theories that, uh, like all art movements, they find some sure. theory to believe in or to promote? Was there one here? Yes, I mean, a theoretical basis was uh, quite important for these artists. In one way, you have to see it as a reaction to uh, Impressionism. Uh, this was a younger generation coming through. Impressionism was already uh, established. It was a, a younger uh, wave, if you like, coming, wanting to do their, their own thing. Um, so whereas the Impressionists had uh, tried to capture life and movement and animation in the city, in the, the younger neo-impressionists, their art is still quiet, it's calm, and the, the themes tend to be timeless. I mean, we're looking uh, behind me, there, there are scenes of the beaches at Collioure or on the south coast of France, and there isn't a soul stirring, it's like a long southern siesta. But then, to answer your question about uh, theory, um, Signac and Sura were fascinated by uh, color theory and uh, 19th century scientific uh, theories about optics and the psychology of color. Uh, and in a way, they gave them a certain um, basis for their art. They would say, for example, that the Impressionists had been intuitive. They were romantics. They, they, they painted things because uh, they, looked, they thought they looked that way. We've looked at it in a rigorous scientific way and uh, this is the way it should be because this is the way it actually is in, in nature. Uh, and so they, they studied color theory, they read uh, all the uh, publications that there were, they visited uh, scientists and so on. But it's also uh, quite important to note that there's a kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek element to it, that uh, it sounds pompous, it sounds serious, but there was a kind of also a kind of a mocking, self-knowing pretentiousness to it. So they quite liked the obscure language of the science, and they liked the way that it was almost impossible to follow. I mean, if you read some of these texts, they're in, they're, they're insanely difficult to uh, to follow. So that 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 also gave it a kind of a an air and a, 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 a mystique, if you like, which again set them apart. So they they thrived on this idea that they were they were rigorous, scientific that they were different, and this was the new way forward. Now we're here in the Vajo. What was the relationship, if any, between Signac and Vajo? They were both in Paris at approximately the same time. Did they know each other? Oh, sure. It's a very important relationship. Um, they um, uh, met uh, Signac sometime at the end of 1886, 80, uh, beginning of 87, at the, when, uh, middle, in the middle of his time in, uh, in, in Paris. And although uh, Fochoch was 10 years older than Signac, the younger artist uh, was quite an important influence on him. It was through um, Signac that uh, uh, Fochoch came to no learn about the neo-impressionist style and pointillisme and the working in the dots and the ideas that you could, you could get more out of colour, that you could extract more out of colour if you applied it in a more scientific way. Uh, this was all uh, fascinating stuff for the uh, young Dutch painter. In the exhibition, what we've done is we've put a, a number of works by Fochoch next to uh, paintings by Signac. And although, you know, it's obvious there's a different character, uh, artistic personality, the mood of the pictures uh, is comparable. The subject matter is quite interesting uh, to compare. You've got uh, the same... Uh, and you even find Fochoch using his own uh, version of the Neo-Impressionist style. Small... Um, strokes and stipples of uh, paint. Okay, Fochoch was never going to be a, a pointillist, but he does adapt his own version of it. So the, the answer to your question is there's a, uh, there's a close relationship, and it was through Signac that he also became an admirer of Sura. And the last thing that Fochoch did before he set up, got onto the train for Arles in uh, February 1888 was that he went to visit Sura in his studio. And so, yes, neo-impressionism was important for the Dutch painter. Now, I've noticed a preponderance of beach and sea scenes mm -hmm. and what looks to me a great deal like the southern part of France. Mm -hmm. 
He was in Paris when he started this movement. Did he also spend a great deal of time in the south of France? Sure. Um, yeah, well, we said it was a summer exhibition. <laughs> um, he, uh, like like Sura, he evolved a, a way of uh, of painting in which, uh, in the summer, he would uh, tend to paint on the coast. It could be in the south, or it might be in the north. Some of the pictures here from Normandy or Brittany, as well as from the, the south of from the south of Collioure and Cassis, from the from the north, places like Portrio. Um, in the summer, would be painting outdoors and doing landscapes and seascapes. In the winter months, would be uh, spent in the in the studio finishing off works and uh, doing large figure compositions. We've got a number of the larger figure compositions here, such as the, the, the wonderful dining room from uh, the Kuala Mulu Museum, or uh, an extraordinary painting which from a private collection has hardly ever been seen before called Sunday, which he uh, conjures up the, the atmosphere of a Sunday afternoon with a bored couple not talking to one another, that kind of, well, you know the Sunday afternoon feeling. Um, so yes, landscapes of the and seascapes of the the south, and of course later on, Signac moved to the south and set up his base in Saint Tropez. Now you've included also in your exhibition here some watercolors. Was watercolor uh, an important medium for Signac? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we're standing uh, now in the, in the first part of the exhibition, which takes the story of Signac's work up to around about the beginning of 1890. He moved to Saint-Tropez after Sura's death in uh, 1891. The death of Sura was something of a blow to him. He lost this kind of artistic mentor, uh, if you like. And um, uh, he then set up camp in uh, Saint-Tropez and he evolved a different way of working. Instead of working in front of uh, nature in his paintings, he, he made sketches and studies and watercolours in front of the uh, motif and then his paintings he made in uh, the studio. So in the 1890s and in the second part of the uh, exhibition watercolour actually comes to dominate his um, output and it's almost as if after this rigorous phase of the dots and neo-impressionism that spontaneous uh, character has burst free again. And you can understand why an artist like that would want to do watercolour painting because they really are extraordinarily uh, free and colourful and uh, rich. Now I did read somewhere, I believe, that he was also maintained a, a lifelong interest in radical politics. Sure. Is this true? Could you? What's the deal there? Yeah. Well, there's nothing unusual of that for an uh, artist of uh, Van Gogh, uh, Van Gogh, I'm sorry, Signac's uh, period. Uh, like like so many of his contemporaries, whether they were writers or poets or performers, uh, Signac became involved in uh, left-wing politics as a, as a, as a, as a in, in a quite a youthful uh, age, and uh, he eventually became uh, an anarchist, and was quite uh, close to the, uh, the, to the to the center of the anarchist movement, believing that um, society, industrialized society, had become corrupt to its core, that something had to happen, that it had to be swept away, that a new order must come, and what now I suppose seem like quite naive ideals of, uh, of people living in harmony and in, uh, with one another, freed from the tyranny of labour through, through machines and with more time to do what they want. Um, and uh, th those ideas, those anarchist ideas, f sometimes filter through uh, quite strongly into his works. A large painting that he did for the uh, the, 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 the town hall in Montreux in the outskirts of Paris called In the Time of Harmony. Mm. Virtually a, a, a painterly rendering of the ideas of, the, of Kropotkin, the uh, anarchist writer. You have here the extraordinary painting of the, the wrecker uh, from uh, Nancy, the Museum of uh, Fine Arts, where this massive figure of uh, a workman with his pickaxe is uh, literally demolishing uh, the buildings. A glorification of labour, but also, in a way, the, the anarchist uh, call for the destruction of the old order. Well, John, maybe you could tell us uh, how long the exhibition will be on, uh, if there's any uh, extra fee for people to come to visit, and uh, when people can come see it. Sure. The exhibition is on until the 9th of September here in uh, Amsterdam. It's open until between uh, 10 in the morning and uh, 6 in the evening, and it's the normal entrance price as for the museum at any other time, which is uh, uh, no extra charge for the exhibition. 
Well, John, thank you very much for being with us today. That's a pleasure. Thank you.